All right, Cece, what's the number one cause of vomiting? Can a leaky gut cause this also? So leaky gut is a symptom of a problem. So for vomiting, you know, it's hard to say what's the number one cause because, you know, let, what breed are we talking about, right? Labs eat everything. They get like foreign body obstructions or they get into the garbage and then they start vomiting or you have like a beagle that's like sniffing along the ground or a basset hound or some other dog that's eating like the stool or they're scarfing up like the the raccoon or not raccoon, but like rabbit poo. We have tons of rabbits in our neighborhood and like that's a delicacy for so many dogs. And then they get an upset tummy and then they vomit. Um, so it just depends. Um, I know Dr. Barbara talked a lot about GI issues and common causes for that. I would say if your pet is vomiting, it can definitely like this can be a true emergency. There's a lot of reasons why. One of the biggest concerns would be, is there a foreign body obstruction or is there a stomach bloating problem? If your dog is happy, healthy, still wants to eat, even though we should be fasting them, but if they're happy, healthy, still energetic, and still engaging with you and acting normal, and they're only kind of vomiting every now and then, or they're having that bilious vomiting where they vomit if they go too long in between, then you, know, you can try a few different things on your own. But if your pet is not feeling good, if they don't want to eat, if they're really, really lethargic, they're not responsive or they're retching and they're not bringing anything up, you need to take them to the ER because especially if they have a foreign body obstruction or a twisted bloated stomach, so what we call a, a GDV, they can die from that. So keep that in mind. And a lot of the supplements that you're going to hear about and that I talk about, so things like slippery elm and aloe and your digestive enzymes, if there's irritation in the, the GI tract, so whether it's in the stomach, whether it's in the small intestine, whether it's in the large intestine, um, whether it's in the esophagus, uh, a lot of these things are going to help soothe and calm down inflammation regardless of where it's at. Um, one of the other causes that's commonly misdiagnosed as vomiting is regurgitation. And this is where your dog immediately brings up food and you don't hear that retching noise. We all know the retching noise. It should be an alarm sound, right? You know, you hear the cat retching or you hear the dog and like you never move as fast as you do when you hear the retching and because they're usually on carpet or a rug or, you know, something that's going to get messed up when they vomit all over it. But if you feed your dog and then all of a sudden they just go Bleh! and it comes back out and it's not processed, like it's not broken down at all or digested. This is something where you need to think about mega esophagus. That's where the esophagus gets big and distended. And that food actually just sits there rather than getting into the stomach. And that can be a nerve problem like myasthenia gravis. It can be a thyroid issue. So those are some of the tests that you need to have your veterinarian run. And it's typically diagnosed with an x-ray. Um, so keep that in mind. There's different things, like there's a big difference between regurgitation versus vomiting.